What's up? Welcome back. Wow, we've spent a full year on YouTube. I think that's that's a pretty big deal. I think it's quite monumental. So congratulations to us. Um, I think we've done so well so far. And this video, we're just gonna do a q and I've got, um, I posted on my Instagram a couple of days back, um, asking you guys to ask me questions on basically pretty much everything. I got a lot of YouTube questions. I got a lot of other random questions around on self-improvement and spirituality. Um, so I'm just going to be sitting here answering them. They're going to be, it's going to be very candid, very informal video. So feel free to grab a cup of tea, like how I have in my Lion King cup with today. I'm drinking peppermint tea. Um, and yeah, just like feel free to grab a cup of tea and just sit back, kick it with me as I answer these questions. So let's get straight into it. First question we've got is. What advice do you have for other people wanting to start their own channels? I would say just start. Um, and I literally mean just that. Don't ever think it, don't think too much about it. Whenever you can, whatever you can, just put out a video and then just continuously do that as consistently as possible. And then as you do that, the more videos you make, the better you'll get, the more you'll figure out what type of like videos you want to make and then you can kind of like niche down into um, into topics that you feel really comfortable and you feel um, brings you a lot of happiness and joy and then kind of go about your channel like in that way. Um, what are your YouTube goals for the next year? Good question. I've got another video coming out next week where I'm going to be talking about my obstacles, my challenges, um, things I'm really proud of in the past year of making YouTube videos and our next steps. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, if you want to see that video. And I suppose I'll be answering that question then. What is your favorite thing about creating videos and what's the most challenging? Um, favorite thing about creating videos is probably like, like it's just crazy how like you can come up with an idea, you can research the information and then you, all you need is just a camera. And when you put it all together, you create something like this or like something of all like the other stuff that I've created before. And it's just like, I find that thing, I find it just so fascinating. Like how, yeah, I don't know. I just find the whole process really fascinating. Hopefully that answers that part of the question. And the most challenging part is probably, it's definitely actually coming up with the ideas. Actually, it's like coming up with the ideas is cool, but then finding the idea that you want to talk about that week, that's the hard part. And I think I've got to push past that barrier of, um, like I really want to make this video not this one. I kind of got to push past that barrier and just make videos and get into state as often as I can, regardless of the topic. And I think I'm getting slightly better at that, but that certainly is probably one of the most challenging parts of making YouTube videos right now. How do you get inspiration for your content? I get it from literally anywhere. So that's other YouTubers like Matt Duvelo, Ali Abdul, um, books, articles, from conversations that I've had with friends or random people, um, from the work that I do speaking and then also facilitating for the man cave. So like there's a whole bunch of random places that I get my content from. And yeah, also TikTok, like believe it or not, like TikTok's got some amazing stuff. And actually more often than not, I feel like my last two videos, um, a lot of the content that I got from there was from TikTok. So. There's that. What's inspired you to start YouTube? I think a variety of things. I, I've actually been wanting to make videos for a very long time. I just never did. It was one of those things where it's like, I wanna do it, but maybe sometime in the future. And actually I did act on it a few times when I was in high school. One of my good mates, Raymond, and I we used to make videos randomly. And like, it'd just be about, really random and funny topics. We even, instead of doing an English oral presentation um, for one of our assessments for English in high school, we ended up making a whole video um, and like we presented that instead. And so it, it was just something that we wanted to do, but we never got around to doing it. And then I think last year in lockdown, because I was so bored and I had a lot of time on my hands, I was like, well, now's a, better time than any to start this. And so I did, and then I thoroughly enjoyed the whole experience. It took me like 14 hours to make my first video and I did it from like start to finish in a single day. And it was like, I think when you know 
you can do something and then it absorbs your complete attention for really long periods of time to a point where you forget to do things like eat, drink, whatnot. Not saying that's a good thing, but like if something absorbs that much of your attention and you forget like the concept of time, then you know it's a really good thing. And so I continue making videos. So yeah, that's kind of where it all began. How would you describe your first year on YouTube? Um, I would say it was fun, challenging, and it went by extremely fast. Um, and the reason why I say that is because I feel like I was making videos like just the other week and all of a sudden it's been like a year. Um, and the reason why I'd also say it's challenging is because in the beginning I expected a lot of growth and obviously I didn't get a lot of growth. I got growth, but I didn't get like a ridiculous amount of growth. And I feel like a lot of my inspiration and motivation was because it was like, you know, subscriber count, view count. And if those were going up, then I was really happy. But then I noticed that when I was publishing videos, especially for a few weeks, that my subscriber count didn't move. It like shifted down a few times and it shifted up a few times. And it was very, very stagnant for a really long time. Like I think I spent, I must have spent like, I would say six months in the 700, 700 sub area. And it's just like, when you look at that, it's like, well, what are you doing this for? Um, and a few times that question came to my mind, but I kind of just powered through it. And it was like, well, no, I've committed myself to something. I'm gonna make sure that I can convince myself that I have the ability to be committed. And so, yeah, it was challenging in that sense. And now it's like, now I no longer really make the, like it's nice when subscriber counts and view counts go up, but more so I make videos because I wanna make videos. And so like, it was an intention shift from, you know, I want this thing to kind of grow and I wanna, you know, get fame and, you know, take money in the future. And like, it, it ended up being an intention that started off like that. Um, and also, of course, like, you know, provide value to people and help a lot of people to all of a sudden, hey, I wanna help people and I wanna make videos because I enjoy making videos and I love doing this. And that's enough. No matter how many people watch it, no matter how, how many people don't watch it, like, it's all right, it's good enough for me. How do you measure your progress as a YouTuber? I think like there's the vanity side, which is like subscriber count and view count. So like that's, I think, objective growth of a channel. Um, but I think there's also the other side of that and that's like continuous improvement. So I remember making a video before, I'll link it up here. Um, but there was a, like I spoke about how, like at the, on my first video, I was like, I would always look to the side. Um, I would be looking down a few times. I wouldn't be as confident on, the ca on camera. And so like, I noticed how I would do videos then and then how I do videos now is completely, completely different. Like I don't stumble as much, like all this stuff gets done a lot quicker. And so the time is reduced and all that. And like, that's, I would say, especially in the first few months of doing something, anything at all, I feel like it's how you've changed as a result of doing it, rather the outcomes that the, whatever it is that you're doing produce. Does that make sense? I hope that made sense. It made sense to me in my head, but I don't know if you understand it. Do you edit your own videos? Yes, some of them I do edit and some of them my good friend Natish uh, edits himself. I'll put his Instagram handle up here. What motivated you to keep going when things were tough? I think for the most part, when things were tough, I actually wasn't motivated at all. Instead of, you know, like people say, you know, you know you've got to be inspired by something. And, and to an extent, I, I agree that is true. And that is extremely important to have something to inspire you so that you can push through the tough times and whatnot. Um, but for me, it was like, it was no longer a thing of, you know, being incredibly inspired. That was there, but even sometimes that can kind of fizzle out, especially when you don't continuously remind yourself of it. And so what pushed me through the tough times was more so like, well, I have to publish a video every week. And no matter how I feel, and no matter, um, and no matter what's going on that week, I'm getting a video out. And so that was it, that was just my commitment. And I don't know if, you, I don't know if you've um, just been able to see that, but like, especially the past few months, I've managed to get out a video every single week. And before that, it was like every two weeks, every three weeks, like it was whenever I felt like I could. And then I, then I just made a commitment to myself that I would just do one every single week. And so like, that's, 
that's been help helpful. How do I introspect? This is a, this is like, I feel like I can go on forever about this question and it will one day have its own video um, where I'll go through it in a whole lot more detail. But essentially the short form version of it is detect what has happened and how you felt to negate it if it is a negative emotion and you feel like it's an emotion that isn't necessarily um, appropriate in that sense for that particular instance that whatever it is that happened and the third thing is you substitute it with a more positive reaction a really quick and easy example that i can give you is let's say that you find um your mind's very distracted in the morning and so you see like you, you look at it and then you see okay cool my mind's very distracted in the morning what is it what is it that i that i do in the morning that leads to these distractions and so you write down this is in this and then you see, oh, hang on. The first thing that I do when I wake up is I check my phone in the morning. And you think back to a piece of content that you heard earlier and you're like, hang on, didn't someone say that I shouldn't check my phone early in the morning because it means that I've set the tone for, a day, for the day that leads me to be really distracted and really alert in the morning when I don't want to be? And so you think about it and you're like, oh, okay, cool. So you detected what's caused you to feel distracted and then you can now negate it. Okay, cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my phone outside of um, outside of my room and I'm gonna keep it in another room. I'm gonna charge it in the kitchen instead of charging it on my bedside table. And so that's, that's you negating it. More often than not, we've got habits that we have in the morning that we generally stick to. And if we don't substitute it with a different habit, then very likely we'll try and go back into that old pattern that we had. And so eventually, even though that, even though you've start off a new habit by charging your phone in the kitchen, you will then still move from your bed straight and you'll go to the kitchen, you'll start using your phone and whatnot. And so it really not, doesn't always happen, but more often than not, like to complete this process of introspection, um, the third thing that you would do is, is you'd substitute that old habit that you had. So instead of checking your phone in the morning, it's like, I'm going to- like, I don't understand, so it really doesn't always happen, but more for the night, like to complete this process of introspection, the first thing you would do is you substitute. So to substitute this habit, you could, for example, replace, you know, that 10 minutes or like half an hour, sometimes even an hour, checking your phone in the morning with instead something more productive, like doing some type of like meditation or doing, or like reading a book, simple as that. And that's the basic general overview of, um, of introspection. Obviously there's like varying levels to it. Like you end up to a point where you detect thought patterns and then you negate thought patterns and then you replace it with a positive thought pattern. But that's like, I'll save that for another video. What are your three most important values? At the moment, it's authenticity, vulnerability, and responsibility. What keeps you motivated? The fact that people get sad. Um, I don't like, I don't like it when people are sad. I know how, I know how bad and like how not nice it feels when you're sad. And I don't like that. I don't, I don't like it when other people feel like that. And so if I can do something about it, um, then it's great. And I love that I can. And so that brings me a lot of happiness and that gets me motivated. I procrastinate because I have no motivation or goal to propel me. How do I know what I want? First of all, I appreciate the authenticity and honesty when you were asking this question. Um, so good stuff. In terms of having no motivation or goal, um, I think within this question, you already have a goal there. And your goal, it seems, would be to find out what it is that you do want. So you can actually set yourself that goal. And then as a result of you setting yourself that goal, you can do all the necessary steps to find out what it is that you do want. And so, for example, I can only speak from personal experience, but I too, um, especially when I was in high school, had no idea what it is that I wanted to do. Um, but I wasn't thinking too much about it. And instead what I did was, was I just took up every single opportunity that I could take when I was in high school um, to a point where I think I had like an attendance rate of like 67% in year 10, not because I was wagging, but because I just had all these like commitments like sport, um, theater, um, and a few other random things that I was going on. And so it's a matter of like, for me, it was because I did so many different random things, I found a common thread that I loved connecting with people. I loved helping people. I loved being on a stage and like acting. And like I really loved those things. And so when the opportunity came along to become a speaker, it was like, this is just perfect. And so I was inspired by that. And then, 
And then, yeah, then you, what you see today is what you see. And so I think like obviously setting yourself a goal to find out what it is that you do want, but then also like also doing reflection, introspection to essentially become really self-aware. I think if you are self-aware, then you can find out what it is that you do want. Um, and to be honest, I feel like a lot of us already know what it is that we want, but because our minds are so distracted and it's just being pulled in all these different directions, we get lost in all these different trails of thoughts. And if we just take the time to sit back, reflect and see what it actually is that we enjoy, then we can find out what it is that we actually like. But those are just my personal thoughts on it. Um, I'm sure if you ask someone else, they may come up with a completely different answer. But nonetheless, I do hope it helped. And that's it. Thanks for asking those questions. Um, I really enjoyed it. Let me know if you like this type of video style. I'll probably be making one when I hit a thousand subscribers or this time next year when it's two years on YouTube. We'll do another reflection then, whichever comes first. Um, and yeah, I really hoped you did enjoy this. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Catch you later. Bye.